Here at Sun and Fun, we wanted to come by some uh, old friends in the business here and learn some new things. So I'm Dan Johnson talking with Daniela Knoll, and we're sitting in front of the bush cat from Skyreach, but there's quite a bit of new things you want to tell me about. So one of them had to do with a growing dealer network. Originally, Absolutely. it was you and hubby Jeremy covering the whole country, and that's kind of a big deal. How are you solving that problem now, Danielle? Yeah, it's tough to do, absolutely, but we've certainly established some dealers across the country, our newest one here in Florida, in the Flagler Beach area. Uh, Just up the road for me, absolutely. so up the airway for me, I should say. We're covered in the Northeast, uh, North Carolina. We've got a new dealer in Southern California. Uh, so it's it's getting there, and it's it's been great. They're very supportive, and I think it's really kind of been able to expand the bush cats across the country it helps out quite a bit excellent well yeah. I, I know people always they're caught by a couple of things the appearance of the airplane I notice catches people's attention from the uh, gnarly cowling up front to the different kind of covering and people kind of question about that and then start looking more deeply but the one thing that always catches them is you've got a really good price point on it we don't need details about that because these things change but just so people know you don't have to spend two hundred thousand dollars on a light sport do you no not at all this is quite affordable and very low operating costs and you've got kits we do have kits and you got a new kit program yeah I believe so we're establishing a program where we're gonna do a starter kits so that people can get started quite quickly and they don't have to purchase the entire kit all at once to get them going and then once they're ready for another another section it's ready to go uh, at a later point so, so what would they get first Danielle um, well it's it's the first one to 50 sections or so um, we're still trying to work out those details exactly but essentially they're building their their cabin structure and the fuselage right away and gives them the shape of the aircraft and they really kind of get get excited about it get from some there. instant gratification then, yeah. yeah now the yeah. covering is one of the last things they would do is that correct or uh, not the last? Not, in, not in all cases the the fuselage does get covered a little bit earlier in the game but certainly then the wings later on and things like that well, for builders and for you not to have to spend all your time on the phone, you need good manuals. How are your manuals looking? Fantastic. We got a new version coming out very soon here as well. We're always looking for improvements and feedback from our kit builders to just improve on things. It's quite easy. It's a two to three hundred hour build, so it's oh, not, is that right? okay. not much. So pretty fast then yeah. to get it together. So what you were talking about, about sending people individual pieces and parts, that's for the experimental air amateur built side, I'm guessing. Right, that's correct. But because you have special light sport aircraft approval, able to sell fully built airplanes, that means you can do ELSA as well, which means that they could do any percentage they want, correct? That's correct, and uh, we just had a successful finish on a kit just up the road here at South Lakeland Airport. So that's uh, ELSA version. And but then they can maintain too, right? Absolutely. So there are some other advantages, and if they wanted to make a couple of changes, put a new instrument in down yep. the road, they can do that, and they don't have to ask anybody, nope. correct? A absolutely. Cool. Okay, so let's go back to the amateur belt for a second. Suppose somebody goes, well, you know, I'd like to do that because A, I want to save, B, I want to just learn everything I can learn about the airplane. But you know what? I'm a little scared because I've never done it before and I don't feel that mechanically apt or whatever their response might be. What do you tell them? Well, that's no problem. I mean, we can certainly help them out. We can do uh, a builder assist type of situation where we can help build, the, you know, partially as long as they are able to cover the 51 percent process and, and, and fall on and those. And where would they do that, Daniela? Um, they could certainly do that at our facility. Uh, what we're trying to do is expand that program throughout the country, maybe with some of our dealers. Ah, okay. Uh, but that hasn't fully been established 100 percent yet, but that's always uh, fairly easy to set up. Well, those people can come and learn from you how it's done, I suppose. Exactly, yeah. But where are you located so people know where that current Builder Assist Center is located? We're located at, at an airport called Galt Airport. It's in Wonder Lake in Illinois, which is right on the border of Illinois and Wisconsin. So not far from that place called Oshkosh that not at all. everybody in aviation knows. Absolutely. And I know that airport. I think we've talked about this before because when I was a young flight instructor in Chicago, we used to go, go, go to Galt and do takeoffs and landing. Yeah, it's a great airport. Been there a long time. Very so. friendly airport. Yep. Come visit it. <laughs> Very cool. And go build your airplane there. there you go. Or get some assistance anyway through sure. some of the hard parts. And then, so suppose somebody came and they spent, I don't know, a week or two or whatever, and they got a lot of the tough stuff and went, you know what, this isn't as bad as I thought. Could you ship those parts to them then and oh, they yeah. continue? Is that how it would work? No, no problem putting it in a trailer, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Or they can just come back and wrap it up with you at another time. Absolutely. Would that work too? Absolutely. And you have space for all that? We do. 
We do, as long as, uh, well, sometimes we do sell a lot of airplanes at once, so we get a bit crowded, but it, but it can happen. Well, I'm glad you're having some good sales yeah. success. We go back yeah. to the price point again. It's, it's such a reasonably priced aircraft with good performance that why not? I'm not surprised you're having some luck yeah. with it. Thank you. Okay, let's jump ahead a little bit now. You said you'd made some changes to the aircraft itself. Uh, not that people would even notice necessarily, but they may notice when they're inside. Tell oh, yeah, me a little absolutely. bit more about it. So the, the cabin itself has sort of been widened out a bit uh, in, a, in a slight bubble. Uh, this allowed for us to also improve uh, the doors themselves to be a little bit more rigid, uh, less flexible, uh, so that they have also provided a better seal around the door. Ah, okay. This is helpful to, for some of us in the cold weather climate. Uh, <laughs> Wisconsin certainly, can get a little cool absolutely. up there. Absolutely, and not only that, it also allowed um, the doors to close better in the tail dragger version, which has a separate bar that kind of pushed up on the door a bit. So it's giving you extra elbow room, about two inches on each side. Okay. And then the um, parking brake is now standard which you uh, never had before, so you always had to worry about chalking it real quick before you got out. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. That was difficult on in the parking situation side of things. On pavement especially, yeah. Absolutely. Um, the braking system is now a standard Matco braking system. Okay. Which has uh, tr improved dramatically. So those um, are just some minor changes that have been done that to improve the aircraft a bit. We listen to our customers, we make some changes, things get tested and approved, and and so we go, we move on. And, uh, we're, we're basically the complete support for the factory here in the U.S. We carry all parts, all, uh, all the purchases are run through us, so there's no need to worry about really where the aircraft came from um, because it's uh, dealt with internally here they in the U.S. They can deal with you if, if they wonder what their status is. Yes. And, and typically, what do you tell people? I know, uh, uh, you know sometimes it can be longer, it's a long ways away and all that. What do you, how do you tell people about the delivery time on the aircraft? How long do they have to wait once they say, I've got to have it? Well, the delivery time has improved dramatically from what it uh, used to be. So the, the manufacturers made some uh, very positive improvements to the production lines. So we are turning aircraft around at maximum, depending on uh, if a lot of orders came in once, maybe four to five months. Uh, but we've been able to see some as quick as three to four. Okay. All right. Well, that's pretty reasonable. People will wait three or four months. It takes a little while. These are not cars coming off the assembly line one every minute or so. That's good. Um, you've also got floats available, I believe. Yes. We saw one on floats once. Are you still doing that, Danielle? Absolutely. We've uh, put the Claymar floats on, on the Bushcat. And How does it work? Fantastic floats, fantastic system. It flies uh, beautifully with them. Uh, we actually took one of our bush cats on Amphib floats from Chicago to Anchorage, Alaska and back last year. Wow, is that right? Yeah. yeah okay, so tell me about that then. Uh, what I'm looking for here is people see floats in the size they have to be to support an airplane in the water and they go, well, that's got to just slow you down dramatically. No, not at all. We still see a cruise speed anywhere between 90 to 95 miles an hour with them on. Uh, Compared so to without them? Without them, you can get maybe up to 105 miles an hour. So I mean, it's not, it's, really uh, very not much a huge not a huge difference. So. Did you land it when you got up to Alaska? I did. In the well, water? I, I, you know, I, I, I can't claim that. I do not have a seaplane uh, rating, but I did uh, fly in it and we did land um, up there in a couple of Because they got a little bit of water up there. They I sure hear. do. It, it was fantastic. <laughs> it was beautiful. You got a little bit of water in Wisconsin too. We do. And we got a lot of water down here in Florida. Absolutely. And our water never gets that hard surface yeah, finish yeah. to it so well, you can land here all your skis are for. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got skis as well we haven't put any on yet but we will soon all right so you can cover it pretty much any way people want then yes experimental amateur built fully built slsa partially built elsa that the owner can work on floats skis to come builder assist center dealers around the country Yep. New features, and I think I hit pretty much all you of them sure there did, tonight. Dan. Okay, pretty good. <laughs> How do we find out even more? I've tried to ask you all the questions people who didn't get to come here might ask, but when they have more questions, where can we find you on the web, Danielle? The website is bushcatusa.com. Very simple. All right, very good. You can find more about Bushcat, several pieces of reporting, and lots of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Danielle Nola, myself here, and her husband Jeremy at Sun and Fun.